<laughs> you know, first of all, I have to say, I'm kind of losing my voice, so I hope I can get through this. <clears throat> Before I get started, I want to say it's an honor to be here tonight celebrating the achievements of so many amazing makeup artists and hairstylists. And I'm going to go off script here, a uh, teleprompter guy. You know, if, if you know me and my, my history, I, I've been a fan of makeup artists since I was a weird little kid, you know. And I, at age 10, decided I wanted to become a makeup artist. And I started watching films through the eyes of somebody who wanted to become a makeup artist. And when I became a makeup artist, I, you know, watched these films and I thought, why does this work? Why does that not work? I tried to, to figure it all out. And I have to say that in this day and age, when everything, people think it has to be digital, and at a time when people thought that makeup wasn't going to be an option anymore, the greatest makeups in the history of film and television are being done right now by you guys. I mean, better than anything I've done, better than anything Dick Smith done, better than anything John Chambers. I, you know, I just wish they were all here to see the work that's being done now because I'm so blown away myself personally. Now I'll go back to the script. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and you, I was going to say you guys applaud yourself, but you already did that. You know? So, you know, I'm so proud. I'm proud now to be a makeup artist. I'm proud of you guys. It's so cool that this event happened. And let's continue with what I'm supposed to say that they wrote for me here. <laughs> uh, tonight, we honor makeup artist Steve Laporte with a Lifetime Achievement Award. I mean, how cool is that, Steve? I, you know, I'm not going to read this part. Keep going. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, it's, yeah, keep going. <laughs> okay. With over a hundred films to his credit, Steve is a Muau Award winner. You know, that's a horrible name. Like, I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> Uh, you know, an Emmy winner and an Academy Award winner for his work on Beetlejuice. That, yeah, that was the year I was nominated for Coming to America. You know, I, I totally forgot about that. You know, I wouldn't be here to present that award, Steve, damn it. <laughs> you know, I like, no, I was like, you know, I've known Steve for a long time and he's a really cool guy and he's got the greatest smile. He's got these two little levers that move up here that make his little squinty eyes. They're really cool. So, a few of his, ma his major contributions include films like The Lost Boys, says The Golden One, but I think it's The Golden Child, Goonies, Coneheads, Galaxy Quest, X-Men, Terminator 1 and 2, and he worked with me on The Grinch. Uh, I'm also not going to read this part, you know, but uh, Steve, actually went to Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of clowns in this industry, but not a lot of them with a diploma, and Steve's got a diploma. <laughs> After four years touring with The Greatest Show on Earth, as a clown and as a high stilt walker, you know, he probably shouldn't have been high when he was walking on stilts. Uh, you know, that <laughs> seems kind of dangerous, Steve. Uh, he lived many lives. He did the Hulk's makeup for Universal Studio Tour. He made prosthetics in his garage. He opened a makeup studio and continued to perform, perform as a clown in commercials and live events. He was hired to run the NBC Makeup Lab, and from there he joined Local 706. He worked with Tom Berman, V. Neal, Ken Chase, Stan Winston, and yours truly. I met Steve I think it was 1980, and somehow he got hold of my address of my house in North Hollywood where I, I had my own little workshop. And he used to come by and really bug the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, and what I finally did was uh, pawned him off of my child protege, uh, Rob Bottini, you might have heard of him. Uh, so, you know, then he wasn't bothering me that much. But the road from grease paint, sawdust, the fantastic medium of rubber, silicone, and visual magic has been full of everything Steve set out to achieve, plus a lot more. To give back to the next generation of makeup artists through teaching and mentoring is in his next chapter. 
2023 marks the 48th anniversary of inter his entertainment arena and 44 years in the makeup industry as a makeup artist and a technician. Let's look back at some of Steve's accomplishments. This year's Guild Award for Lifetime Achievement in Makeup is presented to my old friend, Steve Laporte. I'm still clowning around. Let me keep the, keep the fingerprints off of it, will you? You know, <laughs> 50 years ago, I imagined a future as a commercial artist. A year later, I'm living on a circus train. What are the odds of walking on high stilts and clowning around with a rubber dog on your ass would bring me to where I am today? <laughs> Thank you to Local 706 for this great honor, and to Sue Cabral Ebert, Gail Ryan, Julie Sokash, and Leonard Engelman for your undying support. I salute my fellow nominees, and I'm grateful to my wife and good luck charm, Darlene, who helped me balance my career and family life while giving me the freedom to follow my dreams. Jason and Ashley, you've made your dad proud. My growing family, friendships, and adventures are a huge part of my life achievements, and that has kept me grounded. Thanks to my mentor, Tom Berman, who saw something in me to cultivate with his humor and generosity through the daily tasks in his studio, where I also learned the meaning of integrity. To Keith Crary and Barry Coper, who opened many doors for me. And to Rick Baker for challenging me to step up my skills and come back a year later. See, look, look what I'm talking about. See? <laughs> <laughs> and to the masterful Dick Smith for his correspondence advice <laughs> in that monster makeup book. My collaborations with Ken Chase, Peter Montagna, Jeff Dawn, Greg Canham, and V. Neal have made me a better artist and department head and inspired me to raise the bar on every project that has come my way. I've always strived to be a master of my craft who can handle anything that was thrown at me. I've learned from the best and watched our craft grow in leaps and bounds. I was here at just the right time during a makeup renaissance, and I'm happy to give back to the next generation of talent. As a kid, I wanted to be an artist, a magician, or an inventor. Thankfully, I've become all three. I've also become a teacher. My time, my time in the circus taught me to look into the hearts of others with kindness and to leave them with a smile. That lesson has served me well with the many actors, directors, producers, and artisans with whom I've worked. I loved changing faces into believable characters on screen, and I cherished my time with Jerry Lewis, John Candy, and especially Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau in their last three films. I've had a great ride, and I only wish I could do it all over again with the knowledge that I now have. From circus to cinema, I'm still a face maker. In the fall of, yeah. in the fall of 1978, it was contract day at the greatest show on earth. And after four seasons, I had my eyes on Hollywood and a new future. After just turning down a new contract, and the bosses were pissed, all eyes were on me as I sat down at my steamer trunk in Clown Alley. I glanced at the open lid of my trunk where I had a few pictures displayed, and a clipping of a magazine article caught my eye. Some clown had placed it there just before my arrival. It simply read, congratulations, you just became a makeup artist. 
I still have that piece of paper. Now, now I wonder what's next. Oh yes, in May, I'll be a great grandfather. Wow. Now that's another life achievement. The show must go on. I think I'll go fly a kite. Thank you all very much. <laughs>